Hello and welcome to Fostering Faith. Today on episode 8 we'll be talking about gratitude. And so we thought that this topic was great during our church's uh, 21 days of prayer as it puts you into a mindset really of what gratitude is. And gratitude really just shows you just the, your love and how thankful for you for what God has done for us. Uh-huh. And so we thought that this would be a great podcast topic and it can help a lot of people how we are going to bring some practical tips into just bringing gratitude into your uh, day. All right. So my first question for you is, Mom, what is gratitude to you? Gratitude to me is just a, a an expression of thankfulness. It is a, a spirit of thankfulness is just giving thanks to God. Um What's thankfulness? What's gratitude to you? Just thankfulness that whatever, you, like whatever you got, and feel like like what you're thankful for and everything. Okay, um, I think gratitude depends on acknowledging who God is and what He's done. Um, it's an emotion, de- not dependent upon another person or on nature or anything like that. It is just. Life itself is such a gracious gift from God that once you realize that concept of what all he's given, like your your heart just is just overwhelmed with gratitude. Okay, my second question is, who shows the most gratitude in the Bible, do you think? Oh... I would say probably that, what's that one guy that asked for wisdom? Who is that one guy? P- Not Peter. King Solomon? Was he a king? Was he a king? Yeah, was okay. he King Solomon? No, that was the bad king, right? No, that's... That's him? Mm-hmm. I knew it. I'm just like that. What? What book did he write? Psalms. Mm-hmm. And then do you know of any psalms that talk about Thanksgiving? No, but I know there's a lot. There's a lot. Um, and so just, just a couple of uh, psalms, you know, you have uh, Psalm 56, um, and there's Psalm 100, um, and it says, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship in the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Acknowledging that Lord is God, he has made us, and we are his. We are his people, the shepherd of his pasture, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For God is good, the unfailing love continues forever, and his faithfulness continues to each generation. I think that whenever we look at that, the three verbs... In there, it says, shout, worship, and come before him. Greet him from afar, and we worship him, and we come into where he's at, and the people of God are welcomed into his presence, and you're just filled with joy. Uh, Our approach is joyful because of what he has done for us. We know him by name. He made us. He's redeemed us. He is our shepherd. We are his people, and he just, he protects us. Um, As you look into verse 4 and 5, it talks about the privilege of just increasing that closeness as we enter his gates, we give him thanksgiving, and we praise his name, and that just brings a smile to my face just because we get to praise him. We get to, we get to call him out, and we just get to worship him. And, and we just can review everything that we've done. We let our mind and heart just come out and there's no, there's no strings attached and it's just free and just a wonderful experience. All right. My third question for you is, why do you think God gave us so much stuff that we can be thankful for? Because he's a good God. He's generous. He loves us. And with that abundant love, he wants us to have an amazing life. And those 
that are, you know, those, it says that those that he trusts with little, he'll give much. And, and what materialistic things we don't count as, you know, stuff. I mean, he's given us life. He's given us breath. Yeah. What would be some practical ways that uh, kids could start off their day before they're, you know, getting ready to go to school? What would be some practical tips for uh, teens to start off with a uh, an attitude of gratitude? Um, like naming off things that they're thankful for, like each day, but each day is like different. Like what they like. Or you could do at the end of the day, like what you're thankful for that you did that day or what you got that day. Uh, a, a gratitude journal is something that can be done on your phone, that can be done on a piece of paper. It would be, you know, cheap, free, even since you already have a phone and just do it in your notes section. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes in the season of life, you could have, you could write down the same 10 things every day because that's the only positive things that you have in your life. And if you need to focus on those 10 things for a month, two months, six months, you just keep focusing on those. I, you know, I don't think it has to be something different every day. I know that I do have uh, patients do that in clinic. And so if they're down, they're discouraged, they don't see the positive in anything. Uh, we have them journal, you know, 10 things that they're grateful for. And it could be a cup of coffee. It could be a, a sheet. It could be the floor because some people don't even have beds. Um, that just the fact that they got to wake up, the fact that they are hearing, you know, just for our listeners, this podcast. I mean, thankful for the internet, thankful for our phone. Thank you that we can be able to reach, you know, millions of people across the globe to, you know, to spread the word and just sight. I mean, just little things. I mean, because those are so huge in someone else's life. And um, I have a sign that's up in my office that says, I remembered the things that I have now is what I prayed for before. And just the little things that we take for granted of is just a treasure to somebody else. And so just paying attention to details and, you know, being able to hear, being able to see, being able to speak is such uh, a gift uh, that that many don't even have. It's a privilege, uh, and having that that attitude of just thankfulness, um, it really just sets your tone for the day. Because if you start off your day, what happens whenever you get up in a bad mood? What happens? Um, your day does not go good. Like it doesn't go too good. You just keep that bad thing going. And so what, so if someone wakes up on, you know, Thursday and their mom is hollering at them, get up, get up. And you know, that just sets the tone for the day. How, what advice would you give to a parent, um, to help their kids start off their day? Um, have a kid set off a nice alarm, not the really loud ones, but like the ones that are more like peaceful. And then my next question is, um, for you is why is gratitude so important? I think that gratitude is so important, uh, in just every, every aspect of life. I mean, just it's, it, I'm just so thankful. And then once you don't have much and you have more than what you did, just you're so thankful. I mean, and you can even meet like people that are unsheltered. They have, you know, they, they're they even thankful. They're thankful for, you know, all the things that they, they do have, what even the things that have been taken from them. A lot of times we can even be thankful from the closed doors that God has done. We can be thankful in the difficult times and maintaining a grateful and gratitude heart during trials and hardships. You know, we read in James for uh, class this week and mm -hmm. he said, you know, give thanks in all those trials because he's building our character. He's building um, situations and our heart posture. And so even in the midst of trials, you know, thanking him that he's walking us through those trials, thanking him that, 
you know, he's never left us. He's never forsaken us. And I do think that just having, you know, us as parents setting the tone for our kids and we're just so thankful for our kiddos. And, you know, there's so many, you know, parents out there that want kids and can't have them. And I'm just so thankful that I I have the ability to have a, a daughter. And that is just one thing that I'm so, so thankful for. Uh, in the middle of the night, whenever she's sick, whenever she has sporting events, whenever, you know, I just feel super annoyed that I've got to go to do one more thing. And then I do a heart check and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I'm so thankful that I have that opportunity to be busy. And so just looking for the positive, because uh, there's always a positive for a negative. And I do feel like that can really change your heart posture. Studies even show that if you have a, you know, a, an attitude of gratitude, your depression, you know, drops significantly, your anxiety drops, and you really can focus on it just time and time again. Um, I, people come in and they're like, I, I really, I didn't under, I didn't know that this was going to change my perspective that much. And so when we're, we're filled with that love and joy from him, we are just so full of, of just thanks. Okay. So my last question is, what is your favorite thing to kind of like show off that you have gratitude for? Like an item. I don't, what do you mean? Like, say, like, someone just got this new thing. Like, OMG, I just got this best, like, lotion. It's so cool. I'm so thankful for it. Like, what's your favorite thing that you have? Like, something that I can physically touch. I mean, you... Your dad, I mean, the people that he's allowed in my life, but You're only one. I would have to say my Bible. Um, I mean, that physically, uh, something to grasp. I'm so thankful that I get to read scripture every day. It's his love letter to me. He sh and I could read the same passage 422 times and he shows me something different every every time that I read it. And I, I get to meet him in, in, in here in my prayer room and we get to talk every morning and he just gets to show me so many things. And so, bar none, um, my Bibles are my... Yeah, I'm, so, Bibles. I'm so thankful for them. Um... And that, because I mean, they really have just changed my life. And so what would be something that you could help the listeners be more grateful for? Just the small things are really good to be thankful for because not a lot of people have them. And it's really good to just think of the little, like, say like, oh my gosh, like your friend just said, oh, I just got the new shoes or whatever. And you're like. But I want those. But then just think, like, what do you have that, like, not a lot of people have? Like, house, water, food, um, friends, and family. Not a lot of people have a lot of those things. The things that we take for granted. Yep. Yeah, we're so fortunate um, in many areas of our life. And what we have here in the United States compared to what others have in different in different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. um, I think that we were very, um, we're very fortunate. And I think that would be a great way to end the podcast is just, just thinking about and looking at all of, of what we have uh, and access to here in the United States. I think that we're so fortunate to live in America and um, just, just have a God that we serve that loves us so much that just fills us up um, with our love and our joy and so I think that maybe we should bow our heads and pray. Um, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you so much for yesterday. Thank you for the ability to spread your word. Thank you that we are going to be fishers of men and not wish watchers of the aquarium. Thank you that you are changing our hearts. Thank you that you are renewing our minds. Thank you that you love us so much. Thank you for the gratitude 
uh, that we have in our hearts because of the love that you have given us. Thank you for our life. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for everything that you've done for us. Thank you that you are a God that is love. Thank you for everything that you do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And so uh, stay tuned uh, next week uh, as we pray over our next topic and have a great week. Bye.